Coach, let's talk obviously about Dylan Sampson and the day he had. What, what, what did you like about what he did on the field, and how do you how impressed were you the way he carried himself, not getting to play the week before? And how you went about business? Right. Well, well, first of all, I, I think the way that he ran the ball was extremely well. Uh, we talk about a lot of times in our room about teach tape and the way he pressed the double teams, made a decision at the last second, full speed decision. And then you kind of saw a lot of his natural ability uh, kind of like expose himself in the open field, breaking tackles, being able to use his off arm to try to stiff arm guys and stuff like that to get away from bodies. So just the, the amount of work that he's put in to work on his craft, to make sure he understands the game plan, and just make sure he understands where those free hitters are down in and down out. Uh, as far as you know, coming into this last week where he didn't get a chance to very play very much, if at all, uh, the previous week, like just the way he handled himself in the building. You know, you see a lot of guys, especially young guys, they kind of have an attitude and they're different when they come in the building at times, especially when things don't go their way. But Samson didn't do that. You know, he worked the same. Matter of fact, probably worked even a little bit harder to show us that he deserved a role in every game plan. And uh, I think that the more you see him on the field, I think he's constantly getting better every time he touches the field. Vincent Page. You guys have talked about playing the hot hand and then flow of the game as well. I think Coach Taco had mentioned that. In determining who gets those carries and who gets in the game, can you speak to, to making those determinations on the go and maybe if there's anything that Dylan Sampson needs to improve on in order to earn more of those opportunities? Well, kind of go to backwards. Like, they all can improve on certain things. I mean, nobody's perfect on one. We, we all have some deficiencies that we're constantly trying to get better at. But just for the standpoint of how we kind of rotate the guys a little bit, you know, right now, you know, depending on the game plan, it, it just kind of depends on, you know, who, what the game plan dictates and who we put in first. Uh, the last few weeks, you can see Jay Wright runs out there first. Uh, last week, you know, Javari ended up with more snaps than Jay Wright. The previous week, Jay Wright ended up with more snaps than Javari. As far as how Sam fits in that entire role, it just depends on what kind of package. I think there are always going to be a package or a set of situations that we won't set in the game just because of his skill set is a little bit different. Like all three of them, all three of those guys' skill set is a little bit different from one another. But, you know, I think going forward, you're going to see quite a bit of Dylan Sampson for sure. What makes, back here, what makes uh, Jalen Wright so effective and where do you see him finding success against South Carolina's defense? Well, the, the way Jay Wright runs the ball from a violent standpoint, like an extremely physical guy that can break tackles. When you look at, you know, his yards after contact, like they're they're really good right now. You know, he, he, he you know moves the pile like we like to say forward. He's a guy that you know he runs physical. He runs with a better pad level than he has the last two years, and I think that's what allows him to have some success. As far as like where where he fits in, in South Carolina, I mean, just do the, the, the little things at a high level. That's really all it's about. You know, he doesn't have to do anything special uh, outside of framework and what he normally does. Just do all those little things. Like we talk about ball security is what he's got really good at. Pressing the double teams, being able to read the blocks, protection, make sure his eyes and discipline is in the right place. If he does all those little things at a high level, he'll have success against everybody we play. Adam in the bridge. When you're trying to when you're trying to figure out which running backs play, who gets the snaps, how much is how much do you look at what the offense needs overall? Not just what which running back is in the flow of the game, but what the offense needs. Definitely, I think that's where it all starts. Like you take a couple of weeks ago uh, against Florida, you know we didn't get as many snaps as we would like during the game. We found ourselves in a position where we had to play catch up some. So from a standpoint of maybe throwing the ball a little bit more, pass protection, obviously Jay Wright and, and Jabari are a little bit bigger than Dylan Sampson. So those were some situations where we felt like, hey, we, we got to get a little bit stouter guy. But then as the Florida game goes, if it's going back and forth, there's always going to be a situation where you need that certain, certain that burst or that pop that Sampson gives you in the game. Obviously, he can catch the ball in the perimeter extremely well. And he's a what we call a space guy. When he gets the ball in space, it is hard to, to tackle. He can make defenders miss. He has a really good feel of bodies and spatial awareness around him. Overall, as a whole, how, how would you grade through four games the pass protection of your running backs? What would you, what would you like what they're doing? What would you like to see them improve on? Uh, I do think they're probably rated a B-plus right now. Uh, from a standpoint of I like where their eyes are in the protection. I like they always are where they're supposed to be. I do want to see more physicality at the point of attack, making sure there's nobody at all around Joe or whatever quarterbacks in the game. So the physicality standpoint has to continue to improve. But as far as you know, pad level and where their eyes are starting, they rarely, if at all, I think in the last four games, really ever out of position. It's just about making sure they're more physical at the point of attack. Patrick and Casey. 
Coach, what do you see in South Carolina's defense? What are going to be the keys for your position group and kind of the run game and the offense as a whole? Well, the front seven is really good. I, you know, I'm really impressed with the line. <coughs> Those guys fly around. Uh, they're really aggressive, physical. Uh, you know, you can see the improvement that they had in that group from year to year uh, over the last few years that we've been playing them. I think in my position, you know, specifically, we just got to do a really good job of, of continuing to run with physicality in between the tackles. There's going to be tough, tight runs in those windows, and those lanes are going to be smaller as we get into more SEC play. Uh, you know, you, some of those other games, sometimes that grass that the offensive line is, is, is creating is extremely big because of the, the competition that you're playing. Man, in the SEC, it is not like that. The, the, those grass or those seams become smaller and smaller, and when they do open up, they close a lot faster just because of the people that we're playing. So we got to do a great job of seeing those, making decisive decisions, and accelerating when we get that opportunity. When you look at that South Carolina defense, is there one running back that you have, whether it be Samson, Jabari, or Jalen, that really you feel can emerge and you feel the most confident with giving the ball to? I know you mentioned how different games present different opportunities. Is there one that you think really fits the mold to be able to have success against South Carolina? Man, it's interesting you asked that question because like we just had a conversation about that in the meeting room the other day about how all three of those guys' skill set is, is distinctly different and they have nothing but ultimate trust, trust from our coaching staff. I think all of them, I never know who's going to have the big game. You know, it's been Jalen, obviously it's been Jabari over the years as well. Now you see Samson emerging. Like all three of them guys present a different skill set and it's just really about the flow of the game. There may be an opportunity for uh, Jabari or Sam or whoever to go out there and catch something on the perimeter or break a, break a tackle in the, in the backfield. And next thing you know, it's 60, 70 yards because they all have dynamite quickness and speed as well. So I really don't ever know uh, who's going to get that opportunity. I do, I can tell you this, we trust them 100%, whoever goes in the game. Wes and Vince. Jerry, I guess that there are still some places where you might see a guy get 25 plus carries in the game, but it seems like those those days for the most part are, are done. In, in terms of the, the camaraderie and the chemistry you need in that room, how, how much more important is that maybe than it has been in the past in terms of those guys having to understand, listen, I might get 21 week, I might get eight the next week, and that's just how it is. Man, we're blessed to have a group of young men and a group of kids that really understand that. Uh, you know, in the past, we have not had that opportunity to, to say, hey, look, these guys are going to distribute the carries around the room because we haven't felt comfortable putting all those different people in the game at that certain time. And now what you see is over the course of years, Jalen has had some injuries over the years, Jabari's had some injuries over the years. So now, you know, you add the addition to Dylan Sampson, his role is increasing. I think they welcome that opportunity to understand that, hey, you know, as a team to get where we're trying to go and to get to accomplish our goals, we're going to all have to be here for one another. And the selflessness that they have, uh, that's really extreme. That's different than what you see across the country right now. You don't really see that. Uh, there may be a time, though, you know, this, this coming year where one of those guys may have to have 25 carries a game. It just depends on what the flow of the game kind of dictates. Right now, we haven't had that luxury, but you do see guys getting 20-plus touches, whether we throw the ball to them on the perimeter or whether we, uh, we do some different things with them uh, in the backfield. Last one, Vince, and then we have Coach Garner. Coach, you saw Joe had the big run on, on the first play. Uh, can you explain that as a coach? Uh, in detail, just how much that will help your run game to have that running threat on those option looks from the quarterback position. Oh, that's huge. Like the ability to have a running quarterback or a true dual threat quarterback, especially one that can cross the goal line with speed like Joe did on the, on the long run, I mean, that presents a, some problems all the time. So whether it's more opportunities for the running backs because, you know, those defensive ends or those linebackers just there in the read keys, they understand that the quarterback is a valuable threat. It changes the box. It changes what it looks like on the roof as well from the safety position. So, like, there's a lot of things that having that dual threat style of quarterback can open up for us. It creates more touches for us, uh, which, I mean, they're all welcome to that. Thank you, Coach. Coach, what makes uh, Spencer Rattler so good on, on third down, how he improvises to, to keep plays alive? Well, obviously, you know, he's able to extend plays with his legs. So, you know, that's really stressful, you know, on the defense, especially with the defensive line. You know, we've got to make sure that we're very disciplined, you know, in our rush lane integrity. And then also we got to make sure we can finish on top of the rush and make sure we can, you know, get him on the ground. You know, he's a very good, uh, good player. Uh, you know, he's, you know, you saw what he did last week against Mississippi State. Uh, you, you know, we, what he did last year against us, you know, we just got to, we got to make sure that we're disciplined, 
in everything that we do, and we got to make sure that we try to restrict it and keep him in the pocket. Patrick and Brent. Coach, uh, James Pierce seems to be making a pretty good impact on you guys. What, what has maybe been the biggest growth for him, both off the field and on the field, just in terms of his pass rush? Well, I just think, you know, maturity. Um, you know, I think James has grown uh, in all areas, you know, not just in football, but I just think in, in life, period, which is you know, parallel to it. But, um, you know, he's starting to do things, you know, the Tennessee way and not so much James Pierce's way. And starting to buy into what we're telling him and what we're teaching. You know, obviously, he's always been a very talented young man. You know, but just getting that talent to you know, bottled and going in the right direction. You know, that's been been the challenge. But I think now he sees himself having success. You know, with the coaching. So hopefully, you know, he's going to continue to even be more coachable and be more of a sponge and just try to take everything in and grow and continue to grow. Coach, how would you grade your pass rush overall, and then specifically your inside pass rush, and how important is that when you're playing a guy like Rattler this week to get pressure in the space of the pocket? Well, you know, obviously, you know, uh, when we look at the film on Mondays, uh, the biggest thing that we're, we're more focused on than anything is the production that we left on the field. And uh, when, we, when we're going through that tape, just looking at, hey, if we did, did our proper assignment here, if we did use the proper technique, the footwork, the hands, the eyes, uh, you know, just or, you know, the rush lane integrity, whatever, this is, this is a sack we could have had. This is a play we could have gotten. This is a TFL that we missed out just by bad footwork, turning our shoulders, getting washed. You know, so we're, we're constantly you know, evaluating ourselves, trying to get better. Uh, you know, I think we've done some good things. Uh, but I really feel like, you know, there's so much more room for improvement that we can do uh, as a unit and that, that we've got to keep growing in those areas. What about your inside? Just how important is it to get a, a, a push inside against it? I mean, it's important to get a push everywhere, you know, and, and, and obviously in pass rush, you need, it all needs to tie together. You know, you need to push up the middle, you need the guys off the edge, making the quarterback try to step up, you got the guys pushing so we can't step up. You know, all of it goes hand in hand, you know. Everybody has a job. Everybody needs to understand their job. They need to understand how it affects everyone, not just them individually. And, you know, and I think that's some, that's an area that we, I think we have grown a little bit in. I mean, I, I look at just specifically like just Tyler, and just him understanding, you know, it ain't just about him, it's about, Tennessee and about everybody doing their job and how it affects everyone. If everyone does their job, then everyone has an opportunity to be more effective. Ben and Paige. Ronnie, looking back at the Florida game, it seemed like your group was able to have more success in the second half. Well, what changed there going into that second half? And do you feel like those things carried over to UTSA this past Saturday? Well, you know, obviously, you know, you know, tip your hat to Florida. They did a great job. You know, obviously, I thought about the first half, you know, we were. You know, we didn't have the edge that we need to have. Why? I don't, I don't have an answer for that. You know, I thought we had a great week of practice, but those guys came out and they were more fundamentally sound and more disciplined. They played with more of an edge. Like I told my guys, in this league, there are no off days. I don't care who you're playing against, all right? You have to bring your A game every single day. And we have to have that type of chip on our shoulder when we go in there. And we can't go in there and think we can start slow. All right, we got to start fast. We got to finish fast, and we got to keep putting on, putting more gas on. So, you know, it was a, you know a learning lesson. You know, obviously you don't want to have to learn like that, but you know, hopefully we will continue to get better. And I know the one thing about it, hopefully that is always in everybody's mind, the feeling that you have when you walked off that walked off that grass and in that locker room, and that's a feeling that you don't want to have. And so you need to let that motivate you uh, going forward so that we don't have a repeat of that situation. Amari Thomas has done a good job of making his presence felt off on the field this season. Where has he impressed you most, and how much further do you think he can go to continue getting better? Yeah, he's a big old. You know, like all the guys, I think, you know, he's shown improvement. Uh, he has to continue to improve on his pad level. I mean, that is one of the things that he knows that 
that's his Achilles heel. Um, but, you know, just continuing to play lower. You know, obviously, you know, he's a great leader. He's very passionate about it. You know, he loves Tennessee. He loves his teammates. You know, he does a great job. But, you know, there are some fundamental things that he has to continue to prove on, which is just natural knee bend, you know, just initial uh, explosion, hip, hip rotation. Things like that, that's going to help him chase his ultimate goal where he wants to be eventually. Yes. Uh, two things I'll ask him separate. First, uh, Damon Hobbs has been in your rotation. What can you say about uh, the development of Damon Hobbs? Okay. Uh, I think Hobbs is a, uh, is a great young talent. You know, I think this kid, you know, he has a very bright future. The thing that's, uh, you know, he's impressed me with. For a kid not to be here in January and to have surgery and to be able to come in, you know, and play on the interior, which, you know, in high school he was an edge guy, stand up a guy, move around, basketball player and all that. You know, we thought he had a really good skill set and all that, but we thought initially that, you know, it was going to be more at the end. And, but with our need and everything that transpired, we needed more help that tackle. And for him to embrace it, not fight it, to go in there and do it, it's been very impressive. So, you know, I'm looking forward to watching his development because he has a long ways to go. And once he improves and continues to get stronger, understand the fundamentals and what it takes to play in there, he's got a chance to be, I think, to be an elite guy because of his skill set and what he brings to that position. And that was the thing I told him, you know, I got. You know, Richard Seymour is coming to the game this weekend you know, with, his, with his son, so I'm looking forward to my guys getting a chance to meet him, have a chance to talk to him. He reminds me a lot of Richard with his demeanor, demeanor and his size and his athleticism. So, you know, I'm looking forward to him, look forward to him to have the opportunity to meet each other. And obviously a lot of focus on Rattler, but what else stands out about that South Carolina offense and including the offensive line? Well, you know, you got Rattler, you got number five, the running back that they, they do everything with. You know, he's a Wildcat guy. You know, he played a lot last year against us in the Wildcat position. You know, he, he can do a lot of good things. Number 17, the wide receiver, is a dynamic player. You know, they've got good football players like everybody in our conference. Uh, you know, we've got to do a really good job of defending them. We've got to play sound Tennessee football. Uh, I mean, everybody's got to do their jobs. Thank you, Coach.